So we, we, we understood a lot about why is data important, and um, the next demo is actually going to touch another very important part of data, which is how can we search data. And for that demo, please allow me to invite uh, Scott and Vijay from ThoughtSpot. Please um, take the stage. Thank you. Okay, uh, well it's great to be here today at Datamania. My name's Scott Holden and I run marketing for ThoughtSpot and I thought I would just introduce you guys a little bit to what we do and then I'd turn it over to Vijay to show you what we've built, our new ThoughtSpot connector for the Informatica Cloud. And so uh, to get started here, who is ThoughtSpot and what do we do? So our mission really here at ThoughtSpot is to reinvent the BI industry through search. We've built a new search engine, we call it a relational search engine, that lets any business user use our simple search interface to answer questions about their data in seconds. We uh, got started about two and a half years ago. We launched our product officially, uh, it went out GA in October, and we've got funding from Lightspeed uh, and Venture, or, or, and Kosla. So if you look at kind of the big picture and what we try to do for our customers, it's all about radically speeding up the delivery of information. And if you look back over the history of time, you look at you know, the mainframe era, we might get information in those long printouts over a matter of months. If you look at legacy BI solutions, we got that down to weeks. But if you think about you know, weeks or maybe even days to get a new report built, there's a lot of time that passes in that, in that window. And a lot of good decisions and smart decisions could be made in that window if you shrunk it. And that's why we think we can do that in a matter of seconds and radically speed up the amount of decisions that people make through search. And if you think about that, you know, typically the way this works, if you're a business person, you ask a question. And if you can get that answer right away, typically you're not done. You have another question based on that answer. And it goes on and on and on, eventually to the point where you can go make a strategic decision about how to change your business. And the faster you can reduce those cycle times, the better off you're going to be. So uh, this is not a new problem. This is something that the BI industry has been trying to tackle for an embarrassingly long amount of time. You see here, Gartner estimates that the uh, amount of money spent on software and services for BI is about $70 billion a year, which is pretty crazy. And despite all that, uh, the adoption numbers are about 24%. And if any of you have sat through some of the legacy BI training courses like I have, uh, it's no wonder why you're not logging into those systems anymore. Now, contrast that to your personal experience, where you might go to something like Google, and without any training, I'm sure everybody here in the room and everyone's grandparents knows how to go to this search box and get answers. That's the new expectation. And to do this at scale across all of the millions of data sources, think about what Google's doing, uh, it's phenomenal. And that's the new bar, and that's what our inspiration has been here at ThoughtSpot, to ask every single one of our questions, our customers, what if anyone in your company could answer any question about their data in a matter of seconds? And that's, that's really what we do. And uh, we call it search-based search -based analytics for everyone. And really, our, our mission is to unleash all of the BI, all the data analytics tools for the end user, and let them ask those questions to help them drive their business forward. And we do that by giving them a simple interface to help search uh, their data in seconds. Secondly, we do it at scale. We've hired a number of the best and brightest from Google who were focused on web scale search engines to be able to do this, uh, not only just on a little desktop product, but across your enterprise's entire data source, across any data source, and for an unlimited number of users. And then lastly, we want to help our customers get up and running in a matter of hours. We've built a software and hardware appliance together to be able to deliver the performance and the scalability to help you securely get your data uh, up and running and in the hands of your users. So uh, that's a little bit about what we do. And now to talk about what we've built with Informatica, VJ, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thanks, Scott. Um, so why did we build the ThoughtSpot connector for Informatica, right? So um, I want to break the slide up into two halves, right? If you, if you, if you uh, look at the right half of the slide, um, what ThoughtSpot is doing is making it super easy for business users and all, all business functions to get access to their data very quickly and very fast through the search interface that Scott talked about, right? 
So you're no longer dependent on an IT guy to build you a report and you know, iterate with him for weeks together to get tweaks and so on, right? You as a business user can go into the ThoughtSpot application, ask questions, get insights. It's self-service, it's easy to use, right? On the left half of the slide, um, what Informatica Cloud is providing is, is really a, a similar type of a value proposition for the end user, right? Um, that the notion of the citizen integrator or LOB uh, person being able to go in and pull data from various sources and to gather insights from the data very quickly, right? So, um, so, so when you combine these two things together, what we feel, um, there is a rapid increase in time to value for our customers, right? And this is, a, this is a huge value proposition for our customers. And this is integrated, it's seamless, it, it's part of one experience for the, for the customer, right? There's also another interesting aspect to this, which I find really, really intriguing, which is this notion of um, agile data integration, right? So um, if, you, if you look historically, you know, how this has been done, um, you've got the ETL guy, you know, who's building these very complicated ETL maps. It takes a while to get that done. It comes in, then it's hands off to the, the BI team. There's a meta semantic modeling building. There's, you know, cubes and there's all that stuff that gets done. Then it's handed off to the report builder. He builds these reports. Finally, it comes to the business user and he says, well, this doesn't make any sense. You're missing, you know, opportunity that I, the information that I need for my analysis, right? So what this lets us do is um, do this thing in an agile fashion. And if, you, if, you, if you've done agile software development, it's all about, you know, you build something, you validate it, you come back, you iterate, you build it again, and you do this very rapidly, right? And that's something we think that, that this facilitates, that you bring some data in, you quickly ask questions of the data immediately, get insights, go back, iterate, and you can do this thing over and over again, right? Um, so why Informatica Cloud and you know, the, the strength of Informatica in this space is, is well known. I don't have to emphasize that. But to us, there's a couple of things I want to highlight here. The library of existing connectors. So our customer base is very diverse, right? We, we don't know what sources uh, uh, customers are using. And increasingly, people are using uh, so many different cloud data sources. There's, there's traditional um, on-premise sources. Um, we want to be able to go to any customer and say, you know, we can handle data from any of your sources, right? Because we know there is this huge library of existing connectors that, that we can depend on from Informatica, right? Um, a power Center, you know, in our target customer base, Power Center is deeply entrenched. And, you know, the, the interoperability between Power Center and the cloud offering uh, is very valuable to us. Um, and, you know, the feature richness of uh, Power Center, being able to provide that in the Informatica cloud um, is, is, uh, is very useful. Um, SDK development, um, you know, we were up and running in a couple of weeks. You know, we just got introduced to the whole SDK, and uh, in two weeks we um, got up and running, and really thanks to the uh, support team uh, from Informatica that really helped us, uh, you know, going with this. Um, so with that, I'll just um, switch over to the demo, and I'll show you what we've built. Okay, so this is the um, entry point to the ThoughtSpot application. I'm going to log in here. I can type. So um, the the as I described earlier, um, the ThoughtSpot interface is search oriented, right? You know, um, search the search bar right here is the is the hero, right? That's the central aspect to it. Um, I've got on the left here some navigation elements. Um, you know, I can go to what we call answers. I can uh, which are like reports and you know pin boards, which are like dashboards. There's some data area. There's administration. Out here is an activity stream that, that tells you what people are doing with the product, you know, who's asking what questions, and so on. But this is the hero, right? Um, you have a question to ask. You're a business user. You, you want to analyze something. And just as you go into Google and you type, you come in here and you type your question, right? So what do we want to ask, right? So I, and I'm in engineering. And uh, you know, every once in a while, we sit down and we try to figure out what features do we want to build for the next release, right? I'm sure all of you do this. So we track these features in Jira, right? Yeah, I thought I was going to think you're yeah, asking absolutely. a question very relevant for me as well. Perfect. Yes, please. OK. Um, so we've got some data in, feature, uh, uh, data in Jira. Um, these are feature requests that have come in uh, from our existing customers, from potential customers, and so on. We, you know, we track them. Um, and uh, let's say I go in and type feature, right? 
So what this is telling me, it's showing me a bunch of features that exist in the system, right? There's, there's like, uh, you know, 3,400 feature requests that are, that, are, that, that are in the system, right? Okay, that's great. Um, maybe these things are categorized, right, into some categories. So um, let me see if I can break it down by ca feature category, right? Mm -hmm. So I type feature category, and it shows me um, the different categories under which these things have been bucketed, right? So there's mobile, there's scalability, there's, you know, drill administration. There's like 16 different categories that, um, under which these features have been classified, right? Okay, this is fine. It's still not helping me figure out what are the features that I need to build, right? So let's ask the question, right? So what are the top 10 um, uh, categories, right? Feature category, ranked by, if I simply counted the number of features, you know, what is gonna be my top 10 category, right? So I'll just say, count a feature, right? So I ask a question and I get an answer, right? So what do I get here? I get a couple of visualizations that describe the, the, the answer. There's some summary information that says on an average there are about 396 feature requests per category. And let's zo zoom into this chart here, right? What is it telling me? It's telling me the mobile category is the one where there, are, there has been the maximum number of feature requests, right? And the yeah. second category is visualization, right? So maybe that's what I, sh I should do. I should just start going and building these mobile and visualization yeah. features. Right? Yeah, Vijay, I'll say that we go through a similar exercise, and yeah. I have to say that also visualization is always very high on our list of requests from the, from the customers. Right. But um, an old boss of mine was taught me a long time ago that all customers are important, but they're not necessarily all important in the same way. They're not all equal. Mm -hmm. Can you actually try and actually balance their request, put some value to the, to the specific request maker? It's a great question. So, so you know, yeah, not, not all features are the same because not all customers requesting them are the same. You know, there may be a customer who's requested 500 features, but, you know, the potential business with them is 100K, whereas this other customer who's asked for two features that can get me a million dollars in business. So I need to really prioritize this based on a customer value, right? The opportunity value yeah. of these customers. That, that right? should be one parameter that the CFO will definitely appreciate us right. answering the... Right, so let's just do that, right? Let's see how easy it is to do that, right? But before I do that, let me just um, save this off. Um, I'll call this uh, so that we can come back and compare. Uh, let me uh, save this. I'll call it, um, you know, feature... Uh, uh, request by count or something like that, right? So, and what I'll do is I'll also pin this thing uh, to what we call a pin board. A pin board is like, you know, Pinterest style way of collecting insights into a, in, into a dashboard um, uh, type object, right? So I'll create this new pin board. I'll call it uh, feature analysis, right? And I'll save this off. We'll come back to this, right? I've got this insight saved off. Um, I can open this thing and look at it, but we'll come back to this, right? So let's do, um, let's do what you were asking, Ronan. So um, now this information is in, in our Salesforce database, right? There's opportunities that the sales guys are tracking. There is a, a amount. So let's go bring that in, right? Okay. So let's go to my data section, and I'll say, you know, I'll go into Informatica Cloud, and um, if I look at the, um, I have this data synchronization task that I've already pre-built before the demo. And, and what this is doing really is um, it's pulling in information from Salesforce. And I'll quickly show you what this is bringing in, right? So this is the opportunity table from Salesforce um, that we are mapping into, a, into an opportunity table in ThoughtSpot. There is this amount field here, which is the opportunity value dollar amount, which is what we're interested in, right? And that maps to this opportunity amount column in, in the table in ThoughtSpot, right? So let's go ahead and run this thing. So this is basically bringing in data from the Salesforce system into our system, right? And um, one of the things that I want to point out here, which we think is huge value, is these integration templates, right? So, so uh, what this lets us do is um, get our customers up and running very fast, right? We intend shipping, um, you know, a bunch of predefined integration templates with, you know, popular sources like Salesforce. Um, and this is very useful because um, you can, you, you can uh, it, it helps in sort of demoing the value proposition. It helps users get started, up, get up and running very quickly. Um, it may not be the final um, thing that they will eventually use in production, but they can start with this, quickly tweak it, uh, and get going. So that's, a, that's an incredibly valuable thing that we plan on leveraging very heavily. Okay, so this, this load went in. So I come back in here. Um, I go to this data sources area, right? So now these are all the various 
sources from which I can, um, I can, I can um, uh, these are the sources from which, which have data that I can analyze, right? So you see here there is this new opportunity table that appeared, right, mm -hmm. that was brought in from Salesforce, right? And one of the things that happened under the covers is um, this opportunity table um, got linked with the existing tables through some heuristic rules, right, based on matching column names, based on data types, cardinality, um, and so on and so forth. Um, this, this opportunity table got linked to the Jira issues table based on the customer ID. Exactly. Right? So I'm going to pick that because I want to use that in my analysis. And let me ask a different question now, right? Let me say uh, I still want to know what the top 10 categories are. Um, top 10 feature category. And one of the things I want to point out here is this, um, the relational search thing um, that Scott introduced. Um, so the system is guiding you as you're typing, right? So it knows the structure of what you've typed so far. It understands the, the, the relational grammar with which you analyze uh, data. And for instance, here it's, it's, it's suggesting that, you know, if you're doing top 10 feature category, more, you know, what you really want to type after that is to rank it by some kind of a measure, right? So it has that knowledge. And it also has this learning system in place where it learns as you go along, right? So based on usage, it's going to recommend to you uh, what are the, you know, uh, th these recommendations get smarter uh, with usage, right? Um, it also shows you here what are the other questions other people have asked related to this, right? So you might start typing and you realize, oh, you know, there is, there's somebody has asked this interesting question. Let me go look at that and, and so on, right? So, so here, um, here I want to do um, opportunity amount. So like I was saying earlier, I was rehearsing this demo before and it learned that opportunity amount is what I'm, uh, uh, looking at, so now let's look at the result, right? It's the same structure of uh, the answer that we saw earlier. Um, it shows me some summary information, maybe I wanna see average. So it's telling me on an average, uh, there's $27 million worth of uh, potential business uh, uh, for each category. But let's zoom into this and see what are the top categories, right? So what this is telling me really is, uh, you know, my number one category is really scalability, and that's where the most opportunity dollars are for me. There's $4 million of opportunity for me. Um, and mobile, which was number one, actually is really quite low, right? You know? um, so there's other things like, you know, enterprise integration, data integration, security, and all of that, which are more important, right? So let me quickly, um, um, let's say, by um, opportunity uh, value, and let's, let's, let's pin this guy too, right, into the same uh, pin board that we had cre created earlier. And uh, now I can go look at this side by side, and uh, this is telling me the difference between the two analysis, right? So what this illustrates is the power of bringing in additional data sources very, very easily, quickly, and ask questions off the data, and it gives you completely different insights, right? And, and if we hadn't looked at this from the opportunity value perspective, we might have been building stuff that's not gonna make us a whole lot of money in, in, you know, in the near term, right? So more into scalability and less into mobile. Yes, for now. At least for this, yes. yes. <laughs> Excellent, thank you very, very much. I thank think you. Very impressive, thank you. Thank you.